The first thing you need to know when selecting a mount is to get one that's rated for the weight of your TV. Now, if you have an existing TV, you can check the owner's manual to see how heavy it is, or if you're purchasing a new one, you can either check the specifications online or see what they are within the store if you're buying one locally. Make sure you choose a TV mount that's rated for at least the amount of weight that your TV is, but I would recommend getting one that's rated for about 20% over that, so that way you can be sure that it's going to be strong enough to hold your TV. Now, as far as the style of the mount is concerned, a lot of people like the slim profile mounts because it gets the TV up as close to the wall as possible, but I tend to avoid those because it's really hard to work on the cables, especially if you're purchasing new things and plugging them into the TV, like a new gaming console, for example, it's really hard to work with those. So I like to get TV mounts that have an arm where you can pull the TV out. That just makes it a whole lot easier to work on the TV as your needs change over time. Now, a couple of mistakes to avoid when you're mounting your TV for the first time. One, make sure that you have cables that are long enough to reach your accessories, so your gaming console, Blu-ray player, DVD player, all those things. I would also overestimate this just a little bit because it's better to have a cable that's a little too long than a little too short. Another thing I would do is I would purchase a TV mount that's rated for not only the size of the TV that you have right now, but one that you might purchase in the future. So if you find a TV that's on sale, like for a Black Friday deal or something like that, you can make sure that you have a mount that will hold the TV that you're gonna purchase and not have to redo all of this work. Now, if you're interested in the mount that we're using in our house, I'll have a link in the description below where you can go and check that out. But before we get started on the install, let's do a couple things to prep so that way the install goes smoothly. First up, get all the furniture moved out of the way so that way you have enough room to work on getting the mount installed as well as hanging the TV when it comes to that step. Next, you might wanna take this as an opportunity to do a little bit more cleaning, especially since you're gonna have furniture out of the way that probably hasn't moved in quite a while. And if you wanna go for the gold star, you might wanna take this time to paint the wall before you get started. Next, you'll wanna take measurements to figure out exactly where to mount the TV mount on the wall. In our case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it in the center of our wall. So we're taking a measurement of the entire wall to figure out the center point. So in our case, our wall is 14 feet long. So the center would be at the seven foot mark. Next, you wanna figure out how high to place the mount. Now, we did some research online and it looks like the general rule of thumb is to put the center of the mount at 42 inches high. Uh, in our case, that's really low. And in fact, it's so low that our 55 inch TV would be about three inches below the top of the existing credenza that we have. We're gonna actually install ours at 60 inches, which will be plenty high for the TV that we have. And also be high enough for uh, any TV that we might buy in the future if we decide to upgrade. I heard that. That was just for the video. I didn't mean that we're buying a new TV. Now that we have the center figured out, we need to go ahead and find the studs on the wall. Now, it's really important to make sure the mount is installed into studs because this is gonna be supporting a lot of weight. Now, the best way to find the studs on the wall is to use a stud finder. But if you don't have a stud finder, you can also use another trick using something called a monkey hook. Now, this might be under a different brand name. And what you can do then is push the monkey hook into the wall through the drywall. And if you encounter resistance, you'll know that there's a stud there, or most likely there's a stud there. You'll want to find both edges of the stud though. So this is gonna take a little bit of time to poke multiple holes in the wall. Now, while that is a trick that you can use, I highly recommend using a stud finder because it's gonna be a lot faster and a lot cleaner process. All right, so let's jump into the installation. So here's our mark in the center of the wall and at the right height that we're gonna install this at. Now we need to find the studs. So we're gonna use our stud finder and we're gonna just go along the wall until we find it, find one of them. We need to make sure our TV mount is attached to two studs. And so what we have to do is we either have to, since there's a stud in the middle of the wall, we're either gonna to have to shift this over one way or the other. So it's not gonna be exactly perfect. So per my wife, <laughs> she said not closer to the window, but actually closer to the hallway. So with this template, we have to also not just use these marks. If we want to install this centered, it's 60 inches from the floor. We're going to have to measure how wide this template is. And then we're going to have to take that distance and add it to the 60 inch mark to get this in the center. The template is 10 and a half inches in height. So if we want to find the center point, that's going to be at five and a quarter. So if we want this at 60 inches high, we just need to make this first mark 65 and a quarter of an inch which is right here. And we'll come back and make sure that's in the center of the stud as well. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. And that's right there. Okay, so now we know where our studs are. We've adjusted for the template height. Now we're gonna take some blue painter's tape to help us hold this on the wall. Now I'm gonna get the level to make sure that this is actually level. And if it's not, we can make some adjustments. And it looks like we're good. So that's gonna be where we install this. Now that we have the template in place, I'm gonna put a couple more pieces of tape here to hold this 
For this mount, we're gonna use a 7 32nd drill bit as per the instructions to drill four pilot holes where the template lines up. You also wanna make sure your drill is straight and level when you're going in. To make this process go a little bit faster, I'm gonna go ahead and use an impact drill. If you do this, you wanna make sure you don't um, tighten it too much with this, but this should shorten up the process. And I'm using a half inch socket. Now I'll tighten it down the rest of the way by hand after I give it one more check for level. Now this step could vary considerably depending on what type of TV you have, so make sure you pay close attention to the instructions in the booklet and follow those directions. This also could take a couple different tries to make sure you get it right, but it's worth the extra effort to make sure you have the right screws and the right spacing installed. On this TV, we're gonna remove these screws, and these are just fillers. Next, we have to figure out what size screws will fit in these holes, and it looks like it's not these M8 screws, it's gonna be these M6 screws. So we're gonna need four washers. All right, and since these holes are lower on the TV, then we're gonna to wanna to use the lower holes on this bracket. Now, of course, if your TV, if the brackets show up above the top of your TV, wherever you're mounting this or below it, you'll wanna make adjustments for that. But in general, this is about where we need to install it on this television. Now, if these screws are too long, we would hit some resistance on the inside before this screw even gets close to this back. So if that's the case, we're gonna to need to use some screws that are shorter, and it looks like these will be just fine though. So now I'll keep installing the screws at the different locations, and I make sure that there's a washer for each one. You also wanna make sure these brackets are level on the back, and if not, make some adjustments. Now when you install these, you also wanna make sure this hook is at the top because this is what's gonna hook onto the mount. Next, we'll need to release these lock plates. and then we can hang it on the wall. Another thing I'll say is you're gonna have a lot of hardware that's left over at the end, and you might be tempted to just throw this away, but I'd suggest keeping it because if you get another TV in the future that has a different mounting points or needs different bolts or screws, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you hold on to this so that way you can mount your new television. All right, so we're gonna hook this on the back here, lower it down. All right. And let's make sure this is centered in the mount. Next, you'll wanna take the lock brackets and put them in place. Reattach them with the screws that we removed earlier. And now the TV's actually on the mount, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the feet. You might have to remove the feet beforehand like it shows in the instructions, but for us, we went ahead and left it on until it was up on the wall. Also be sure to hold on to the TV stand or the feet in the future, because you never know, you might need these again. In order to keep the screws in place and not lose them, you can also take some painter's tape or some masking tape and tape these in place so that way they're always with the stand and you don't lose it like I just did. All right. And that's all there is to getting the TV hung on the wall. Now, obviously we haven't hooked up any cords to the TV yet, and we're gonna do something special in order to make sure we hide not only the HDMI cables, but also the power that's going up to the TV. So if you're interested in that, we'll have a card that pops up here, and also a link in the description where you can go and check out that video. We'd appreciate you liking and subscribing to the Top Homeowner channel, where our goal is to help you become the best homeowner that you could possibly be. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.